This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. With an entrepreneurial approach, breaking new ground and learning as they go. We are all entrepreneurs at some level. Gone are the days when people worked for a single company for 40 years and then retired, and then that company took care of them for the rest of their lives. Each of us is managing our own life and career and having to decide when to take risks and when to step back or step aside. This book isn't just about my entrepreneurial journey, though. I've compiled many different stories from people in different walks of life and a wide range of business situations. My research and the work that I've done have taught me that although this problem is widespread, it's also individual and personalized. My hope for you is that as you listen to this audiobook, you'll recognize the times that the imposter has been at work in your life and career. You'll learn to be more aware when it shows up in the future and ready to deal with it. This audiobook is full of the tools and techniques you can use to disarm that inner critic so that you can jump into opportunities more easily and step forward when you want to step back. You'll gain a better understanding of the important roles of community and vulnerability and get a new perspective on failure and success. I hope this book will give you confidence, but not just a confident feeling. Confidence in your knowledge and understanding of the battle that plays out in your own head. Confidence that it's a battle you can win. I also hope that you will have a new ability to recognize the imposter at work in others and to help them win their battle as well. You can become a person who changes someone's life in one conversation. I have seen it happen now more times than I can count. I look forward to hearing how it happens for you. Chapter 1. This is personal. Did he just call me the expert? I sat there hoping and praying that no one would ask the question, what makes you an expert? I was worried that someone would question my experience or ask me to tell them about other clients I had worked with and similar problems I had solved. It was day three of my first consulting gig. My former boss, John Levy, had taken a job as chief information officer and inherited a struggling information technology department. I had recently formed a company with plans to leave my job and strike out as a consultant, so he agreed to contract me to work on some projects. Communication in the IT department was weak and dysfunctional. The company relied on custom software to serve its customers, and that software was in constant need of repair. But software issues were being handled in a haphazard, inconsistent way. The business was suffering from the software issues, and trust in the IT department was low. Though I had no formal training in process improvement, I had always paid attention to breakdowns in process and communication. My former boss, John, knew this, and he believed I could make a big impact, so he assigned the problem to me. Two days later, I sat in a meeting with the entire software development team. The manager of the group introduced me by saying, you all know we've had some breakdowns in communication, so that's why we've brought in an expert. I hadn't proclaimed myself the expert. That title was given to me by someone making an assumption. But I knew I couldn't say, actually, I've never done this before, so I'm just going to figure it out. Yet, that's exactly what I was going to do. Figure it out is part of my job description. Most of my career had been defined by figure it out moments. Going back to the age of 21, after a few years in the music industry, I took a job at a small business owned by Mike Wharton, a man I knew from church. I was mostly doing manual labor, moving inventory in and out of the warehouse, making deliveries, and so on. But I took an interest in the computers that ran the printing equipment, and Mike noticed. One day, Mike came to me and asked, do you know anything about building a website? This was in the late 1990s, the age when everyone had a stack of America Online CD-ROMs they'd received in the mail. Websites were somewhat new, and not many small businesses had one. Not a thing, I said. I genuinely thought that building a website was way over my head. Well, I think we need a website, and I think you're the guy to figure that out, so that's your new job, Mike replied. Uh, what? I started asking around, and the initial advice I got was to buy some software that would do a lot of the hard work for me, eliminating the need to write the actual code known as HTML. But for whatever reason, that didn't sit well with me. If I was going to do this, I wanted to really understand how it worked. 
So instead, I bought a book on HTML and read it cover to cover. It made absolutely no sense to me. So I...